Hello friends, I am your friend Takshil Yadav with a new topic of geography that is the globe, latitudes and longitudes. As you know that our Earth is the third nearest planet in the solar system to the Sun. It is a very fascinating planet as it is the only planet in our solar system which can support life. The, some of the favorable conditions are due to the suitable temperature, presence of water, presence of air, presence of atmosphere, etc. Now, as you know that we need to understand the earth very well. Now, as we see the photographs taken from the space by satellites, in these photographs, we see that the earth is circular. But the earth is not circular. It is in joyed shape. That means earth shaped it is in joyed shape that means earth shaped yeah and it is a shape of like a ball or an orange and is slightly lengthier at the equator and flattened at the poles that is why it is in the shape of a joyed now as you know that we need to understand the earth very well so to understand the earth better we need a true representation of it and the globe is a true represent and the globe is a true representation of the earth as it is a spherical representation that tells us about the different places the oceans the seas in of the earth exactly in the relative sizes now types of globes globes can be of three types first big globes these are globes that you can even show the cities, towns, roads, but they are not easy to handle. Small globes. They are pocket globes which are which can be carried with ease but are not very exhaustive. Means we can see, we cannot see things very clearly in them. And globes like balloons, these globes can be inflated inflated, sorry, and can be carried with ease. They are just like a balloon in the shape of a globe now a globe you, as you can see first seeing this globe you can see a circular we everyone can't see this um, there is a circular pipe that is going through this point to the to this point of this globe this is the axis a globe is always mounted on an axis and the earth is always mounted on an axis the axis is mounted mounted Mounted, M O U N T E D, mounted on an axis of 66 and half degree. Yes, the angle that we make of this axis with a vertical line will make up of a 60 of 66 and a half degree. Now, what is an axis? We don't know. <coughs> axis. The axis is a imaginary line that joins the North Pole. Here is the North Pole and the South Pole of the Earth together. And this is the imaginary line on which the Earth spins. And this process is known as rotation. Rotation can be compared to the spinning of a top on its axis. Now, another imaginary line that is the equator. See, here is the equator. This, I'll show you. This is the equator. Yes, the equator is an imaginary line that divides the earth into two parts. The upper part or the northern half is known as the northern hemisphere. See in this globe, this is the equator. So this is the northern half because it, it is the upper part. So this part, this whole part that is above the equator is the northern hemisphere. And the part below the, and the lower part or the southern half is known as the southern hemisphere. See? The part below the equator. This is the part below the equator. Yes. This is the southern hemisphere. Now the grid lines. As you can see, here are the grid lines. To understand the earth better, a globe has some lines drawn on it that are both horizontally and vertically drawn. Now these lines are known as grid lines and they form together a shape known as the grid. Now these lines are of two types. The type of lines that are drawn horizontally horizontally from North Pole to South Pole in this way. See, I'll show you. Such as this one, the equator. 
and this one, this one, even this one, or even in the southern half, like this. See, <laughs> they all are drawn horizontally in the area between the North Pole and the South Pole. Here, they are known as the parallels of latitude or simply latitudes. Now, the lines, we can also see some lines that are drawn from the North Pole to the South Pole vertically. What are they lines known as? What are these lines known as? These lines are known as the meridians of longitude. Yes, these are known as the meridians of longitude. The imaginary lines that are drawn vertically from the North Pole to the South Pole are known as the meridians of longitude. Today in this lesson, we will only discuss about the parallels of latitude which are drawn horizontally, such as these. You may notice one thing, that the equator, see, equator that is drawn here on the globe is thick than the other latitudes and even the longitudes. Do you know why? Yes, that is because the equator is a main, it is the main latitude that divides the earth into two halves and that is why it is known as the great circle it is known as the great circle due to its because it divides the earth into two halves that is the northern half or the northern hemisphere and the southern half or the southern hemisphere the other circles other latitudes panels of latitudes such as this one such as this goes round like this, this goes round like this, and here, and this one, they are very hard to see as there are many countries here. These are, they are the small, they are the small circles because they are not that main as the equator is. Now, whenever we want to find the location, so I forgot to tell you why are the latitudes and longitudes used. They are used to find an exact location of a place in, and know whether it is in the north, northern hemisphere or in the southern hemisphere. There is one main thing. If Now, think if the, there are two places. One in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere. Both measure 20 degrees each. But the only difference is the place in the northern hemisphere measures 20 degrees each. North. Yes, we use N to denote that the place is located in the northern hemisphere, and the place in the southern hemisphere is and the location of the place place in the southern hemisphere. We will write as twenty degree south. Yes, this is the main difference. We should always write N or S whether we want to show that it is in the northern hemisphere or in the southern hemisphere. Yes, and that is the main mistake that we originally make. Now let's see. Here, the equator. The equator is measured at zero at zero degree, zero degree latitude. The thing that is for equator is that is it is neither measured in north. N or S? No. Never. It is never measured in N or S. Because it is a central line. Central latitude. That is why it is not written neither in N nor in S. Because it is in between them. Right. Now let's see. This is the northern hemisphere. This is the southern hemisphere. Now as I told you earlier, the equator is a great circle. And now if you want to find the measure, the location, exact location of a place, in whether it is in the northern or southern hemisphere, we will find it like this. See? Oh, yes. Yeah. Like this. Here, think if the place is here. So first, we will have to find if the, whether the thing is, whether the place, sorry, is located in the northern part or the southern part. If it is located in the northern part, see here, the place that is located, maybe I see, I say this one. See, I say this one. Or even, I say, see, I say this part. This part. 
it is now we here we are confirmed that it is located in the northern hemisphere because it is above the equator right see above the equator and here is the equator so the part above it that is that covers the area of this to this in every part is the northern hemisphere now assume that the location of the place that was this is 25 degree north 25 degree so as you know that it is in the north part so we will write it as the 25 degree north now there is a main difference that uh, occurs in many other things such as the seasons due to their location such as when it is winter in the northern hemisphere it is summer in the southern hemisphere when it is summer in northern hemisphere it is winter in southern hemisphere means the seasons are just opposite when it is spring in the northern hemisphere it is autumn in the southern hemisphere and when it is autumn autumn in the northern hemisphere it is spring in the southern hemisphere this is the cycle that takes place assume that this is this is the sun so at first it will go like this here you we can see that the northern part the northern hemisphere is facing the sun and the southern hemisphere is turned away so the sun lights sun rays will go slanting here but they will go direct here and the one fact that i i want to tell you is the places that are located on the equator there is no place that is not located on the equator such so as see here here this place is located on the equator this place will have no change in the season it will always have summer because whenever the earth is in this it doesn't matter when the earth is in this position or in this position the equator will always receive direct rays means there will be heat there every time and the direct rays and what is the difference between direct rays and slanting rays the one main difference is see i will draw mm, not very well suppose these are the slanting rays like this they will co cover a area of a larger area and even when they are slanting they will lose more heat they will lose more heat while they pass through the atmosphere because they cover a larger area that is why when slanting rays come to a larger area yes they always take a larger area they give less heat because one main reason is that they cover a larger area means the heat is divided into many parts and the second is that they lose more heat than the direct rays in the atmosphere now what about the direct rays the direct rays are straight from the sun and they don't lose any kind of heat they do lose but not that much as slanting rays so they lose less heat in the atmosphere while traveling to the earth and even the direct rays cover less area they cover less area so the heat is not divided into many parts many many much area sorry and here is the slanting rays the slanting rays take a large area they cover a large area that is why the heat is divided into the heat goes into much area more area than usual that is why the direct rays give more heat than the slanting ones and the equator always receives direct rays so the equator always has summer and the temperatures are very high and even as you can see when it is christmas the northern hemisphere has winter at that time because the 22nd december december is celebrated as the winter solstice so 3 days after 20 on 25th christmas we celebrate christmas
25th December, sorry, we celebrate Christmas. At that time, the earth is in a position like this. We can see, I am just telling, the earth is in position like this. Means the direct rays are going to the southern half or the southern hemisphere and the northern half is receiving slanting rays. Understood? M means in here, the win Christmas happens in winter. But while in the southern hemisphere, you know that it is summer. That is why the Austri that is why Australia. We know that Australia is located in the southern hemisphere. That is why the Aussies, Aussies are the people that live in the Aus that live in Australia, celebrate a summer Christmas, and they always wear light clothes because their uh, temperature is hovering around forty degrees Celsius. Yeah, forty degree. Celsius. That's very high. Yep. So friends, this was this was what I had for today. Meet you in the next lesson. Like this video, share this video, and subscribe my YouTube channel, Takshil Yadav. Jai Hind.